I've been reading a lot about uh, how Classless Act was uh, founded in social media and so on, but I, what's actually interesting for me is how was it to start a band in 2019 and then like the pandemic hits? Oh man, you know, it's, it's uh, let, me, let me choose my words carefully because it it made it was very good for us um in a in a weird way like uh we were writing pretty good songs like good rock and roll songs but then the pandemic hit and then it gave us something more to write about and we had to stay in and we had to just write more we had nothing to do but write and then um we got to know our bandmates even more. We got closer. We got in more fights and more better times. And it really made us a better band. So, I, you know, it was pretty good. How do you feel about like the start of uh, a band in a, in a time like this when everything kind of goes like the opposite way it usually does? Like first you have a lot of music and then you go for gigs and so on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, no, I know. Uh, it. I don't know what to think about it yet. It's very, it's, it is very strange. And I think it breeds a new kind of band. Like it makes, uh, it, I think it'll, it'll show when we do start playing live finally again and go on tour, it's going to feel very, people are going to like notice, like, this is kind of weird, a little different. And I think it's because of how we started. Yeah, you talk about how much you were working on the material uh, during the pandemic. And of course, uh, Give It To Me single and video are now out. But uh, how much is there like uh, ready material? Mm, wow, we already recorded the whole album, which will be out in a year. It's recorded and mastered and everything. And um, and the EP will be out this year, but the whole the whole album is already recorded. And but we have at least like three or four albums worth of music just sitting in our in our laptop, you know, waiting to be recorded. Yeah, that's kind of the other thing of this time. How does it feel to kind of be sitting on top of of material, like you said? Uh, it's a little um, what's the word? I don't know. It It's like a little. Uh, I don't know. I, w- I wish we weren't. I wish we could just show everybody everything. Um, but it because some of the stuff we're sitting on is very, like, let's say progressive and maybe a little different kind of genres and different kind of ideas. Um, and but I think that'll that'll just be something for the future. People will see later. Uh, are you still going to stick to the album and EP format or? How do you feel about that? Is the album dead or? I think we'll stick to the album thing. Like we'll start. Well, I think what we'll do is we always release an EP that's in the album. And so we'll do both and we'll do anything. We'll do singles, EP, everything. But we'll always go back to the album because this band represents kind of like old souls. We want to kind of stick true to like the good rock and roll bands back in the day. You know, give you a whole thing, to like a whole story to to listen to you mentioned that you were working in kind of a new way uh during the pandemic and while you were working on the material so what was kind of the workflow uh how were you writing these songs as a band uh every single any way you could think of like it would just be maybe just one person like i would come in with a whole song or the bass player would come in with the whole song or the guitarist would come in uh and then we would leave it like that, or maybe one of us would tweak it a little bit, change some stuff, or it would just be three of us sitting down, or we would invite outside writers. We've written with some great writers of our time, like the guitar player from Buck Cherry, Keith Nelson, and um, uh, Justin Hawkins from The Darkness, and a lot of great producers. And we just kind of like jumped around. So like we just do any anything we can. I don't know, even... Even like on like we've done uh, Zoom sessions with people in Nashville or with just each other or even like on a phone call. We're like, hey, what should we do here? And we just kind of do it, you know, and then we make a demo on our computer and then we make 50 versions of one song. And then we're like, all right, we like that version. And then we, and we that's it. All right. And how was the recording experience for you? Like the first 
you know, debut EP and debut album. So how was the experience? Oh, it was amazing. A lot of hard work. Um, we recorded at the like super famous Sunset Sound Studios. It was um, Studio One, I think. Studio One where like the Doors uh, recorded two of their albums and like the Rolling Stones did a few of their albums and a bunch of people, Bee Gees, everybody. Um, and so it was really, there's a lot of energy in that studio and it's it's really big and we did it like, you know, a good old rock and roll band does it. We went in, we just played it all together. I sang it and then pretty much kept it, except maybe I replaced one or two vocals. And, but that's pretty much it. What you hear on the record is us like performing live. So it was really cool. I had a great time. We worked with producers, two producers, one Bob Rock, who did Metallica and, and Motley Crue and Michael Buble. And we, we also worked with like Joe Ciccarelli who like worked with Jack White and Alanis Morissette and all these great Morrissey and all these great artists. So they, their minds came, they just like taught us everything, you know, like we needed to know. And it was really cool. It was great. It felt like we we're back in the, like the seventies again, you know, we we're just kind of doing it old school. During the kind of times we are living now, where do you get inspiration to, you know, write rock music and rock songs? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. Like, like rock and roll is just like in my heart. It's in all of our hearts. You know, we, we grew up listening to it and we kind of lived that lifestyle. I should say, like we kind of stay out late, have fun ever since we were kids, just like playing in the dirt and, and, you know, run around, get scrapes. And, um, but to, as far as like, what, like what inspires me to write music just in general, like just, almost anything like uh, what's going on current events. I'm very driven by politics too, like what's going on in, you know, the country and, um, and uh, just like social things, but as well as things just like, like nature or like what people say out on the street. If I hear someone say something funny, I like take it down in my head or I write it down and I just kind of, I think about it. Like usually if I hear someone say something, I'll internalize it. And then I think like, what would, what do I think about that? And then that just becomes a whole song. And I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but it's just weird. It's like, a, you know, anything. Yeah, it does. Uh, well, we've been talking a lot about uh, how the pandemic is affecting everything, but things are looking a bit better now. And uh, well, you will be touring with Mötley Crue and Def Leppard next year. So like, what are your thoughts and feelings about that and expectations? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's just, I can't even describe it. I, I have, I've no, like, I've been, I've been a musician in LA for many years. I've toured a little bit. I've opened up for some great, amazing acts too, but like, this is different. You know, this is huge. I've never played a stadium and, um, and yeah, this is, this is very big. So I don't know. I just think, I don't know what to expect. I just think like, it's going to be like crazy. All I know is I'm working really hard and the whole band, we're working really hard and training for it. We're making sure we get tighter. We, we just sound good and we are healthy. We feel good. And we're just making sure we're ready. We have to do one of, uh, another interview after that tour and, uh, like oh. then, then like see how your expectations were matched. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. I, I well, that'll be funny to put them back to back. <laughs> a lot of talk how you are kind of the modern version of those classic rock bands, and like you said, you've been living the like rock and roll lifestyle. So, what exactly is the modern version of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, or is the sentiment still the same? Uh, you know, it is. It's kind of. It is kind of the same, yeah, but maybe a lot more responsible. So I think there's just one more R, sex, drugs, rock and roll and responsibility. <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't, we try not to like, you know, mess. We just like more in this day and age, we have like smartphones and we're just like, you know, we keep things in a calendar and we make sure everything's working smoothly. Everyone wants to have like the same, uh, 
we all have the same goals. We just want to reach it. We just want to make sure we're working because I love to work. I think now the modern rock star loves to work. We love having a schedule and, you know, we don't want to just lay around all day. We want to get better. We want to get stronger and more creative. And, um, and I would almost, I would replace drugs with just, you know, uh, uh, music. So even though rock and roll's in there, rock and roll is more of like an action. I would say sex, music, rock and roll, you know, like I just, we all, everyone in our band just loves playing music and like finding more music things and listening to music and finding new music and yeah. You are working hard and you have a lot of goals, but we have been also talking about how this time kind of hinders everything. So how is it to, even at the moment, while th- when things are looking better, how is it to kind of plan ahead? How much can you like map your future as a band at the moment? It's, it's very difficult. We, we, uh, we talk about this every week, actually, um, with the band and everything. We just see like, what, how can we plan the next month? And it's really right now we're just kind of going like we're ready to like everything will be ready by next year. So we book gigs and we have a bunch of gigs lined up and uh, potential other tours as well. And yeah, we're just moving along like we just have we have shows here in L.A. right now. So that's pretty cool. And um, and yeah, we just make sure we're like always like kind of creating content and like filming everything we do and having things ready to put out. But as far as like how to plan, it's just, you just kind of assume everything will be normal and then you just keep going. And if it's not normal, then you just, you're ready to make it, you know, in a not normal world.